Hip hoop hooray! It's the physics of hula hooping. Most people know what a hula hoop is or even how to use it, but many don't know the fundamentals of hula hooping or even where it came from. The furthest linked back to hula hooping is during the years when Greeks would use them to tone their muscles. Later, in the year 1300, hooping was introduced to Great Britain, which resembled the same type of idea as hula hooping. More recently, in 1958, the first plastic hula hoop was invented by Arthur Mellon and Richard Neer and introduced to the company Whammo. They named it a hula hoop because of the similarities between Hawaiian hula dancing. Moving on to what a hula hoop actually is, I will need someone to volunteer. A hula hoop is a hoop that is spun around the body by gyrating typically the hips and is usually made out of plastic. The friction and weight balance each other out to keep the hoop spinning at a level position. The hula hoop can also be spun around different parts of the body, such as the arms and the neck. The hula hoop can come in many different weights, which will result in different diameters. For my first demonstration, I will be showing you how the mass affects the spinning of the hula hoop. First, I will have you try to hula hoop with a smaller and lighter hula hoop. I can do that easily. I really don't think the mass will make the difference. Wow, this is way harder than I thought. Let me try with the heavy hoop. I can't believe the mass of the hula hoop really makes that much of a difference. Can you explain to me why this happens? Of course. The reasoning behind why it is easier to hula hoop with the hoop that has the greater mass has to do with the idea of inertia. Inertia is a property of matter and it resists change in motion, which explains why the hoop kept on spinning. The greater the mass, the greater the amount of inertia there is, and vice versa. Once you get the hoop moving with the greater mass, the easier it is for the hula hoop to keep on moving. Thank you for teaching me how inertia works. Is there any way you could explain to me what other forces keep the hula hoop up? Of course. There is a force called momentum, which is a quantity of motion of a moving object that can be measured using certain masses and velocities. To find the momentum of any object, you can use the equation P equals M times V. What do those letters even stand for? The P in this equation stands for momentum, while the M stands for mass, and the V stands for velocity. For example, if the mass of the hula hoop is 0 0.001 kilograms, and the velocity is 10 meters per second, That means that the final momentum would be P equals 0.01 kilograms meters per second. I think I read somewhere that a force called torque was also involved, but I have never really understood what torque is. Torque can also be known as a normal force, and it is a twisting outward force that helps the hoop spin. The equation for torque is tau equals r times f times sine of theta. Tau is the torque, r is the radius, f stands for the force of the object, and sine theta is the sine of the angle between an object and a horizontal line. An example on how to find the torque of an object is if the radius of the hoop was 0.2 meters, The force exerted is 4 newtons, and the angle from the ground is just 0, because the hoop is level. The sine of the 0 equals 1, so you can just cancel that part of the equation out. And then you get that torque equals 0.8 newtons meters Along with these forces, there is an upward force that is exerted from the hips while hula hooping, and also there is the force of gravity, which tries to pull the hoop down while it is spinning amongst the body. Another force is the centripetal force, which keeps the hoop spinning around the axis. 
One final force in the system is the force of friction. The friction between the hula hoop and the person will ultimately slow the spinning down and also helps the hoop stay up on the body. Thank you for these explanations. Sometimes I see people throw a hula hoop and then it comes back to them and I don't really understand how to do this or why it happened. Can you tell me why? Well, in order for a hula hoop to come back to you, you can't just roll it. You must throw it and flick your wrist in an upward motion in order for it to come back to you. Like this? Exactly. The reason why the hoop comes back to you is because of a force called the rotational force. I still don't understand. What does rotational force have to do with this? The rotational force and torque are the same force. Since when you release the hoop, the hoop begins rolling towards you. When it hits the ground, it also is already rolling towards you. The rotational force spinning in one direction is great enough so that the hoop is able to return to you. What other things can you tell me that relate to the physics of hula hooping? Well, what do you want to know? Anything in particular? Are there any things that have similar physics as in the hula hoops? Yes, there are many. One example is a ball and a hula hoop share a similar aspect in physics. Friction in a rolling ball slows the rolling down until the ball is at a complete stop and friction in a hula hoop slows the spinning down. Another everyday example is when you are pedaling a bike and you stop pedaling, the bike will continue to move until gravity or friction slows it down. This is similar to the inertia in hula hooping, which keeps the hoop spinning until another outside force changes or acts upon it. For one final demonstration, I will need to use a hula hoop, a ball, and a water bottle. First, I will place the hula hoop on a flat surface with the water bottle on the outside of the hoop next to it. Then, when I roll the ball on the inside of the hula hoop and lift it up at a perfect time, the ball will go off and hit the water bottle. Whoa, I didn't realize that when you lifted up the hoop, the ball would move from the point that you lifted the hoop and continue in a straight line. When the hoop is removed, the centripetal force is also removed, which results in the ball moving in a straight line rather than in a circle. This is due to the fact of Newton's first law, which of course is the law of inertia. Newton's first law states that an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced outside force. When the ball is making contact with the hoop, there is a centripetal force always facing inwards. So when you take away the centripetal force, the object that was in motion changes direction due to the unbalanced force. Also, since the centripetal force is facing inwards and the velocity is always on a tangent from the circle, this makes the ball continue its velocity in a straight line. At first, when you were beginning this experiment, I would have lifted the hula hoop much earlier because I thought it would move in a circular motion a little longer and then straighten out. But now, I know you must lift it when the ball is right in line with the water bottle. Exactly right. Do you have any more questions for me today? For my final question, I was wondering if you could tell me some fun facts about hula hooping. Although many may associate hula hooping with children and just as a toy, people also use hula hoops as a form of exercise and try and lose weight. It is thought that if you perform certain hula hooping exercise and even join a hula hooping class, your waist will slim down and eventually you will be able to lose weight.
Wow. I didn't think it was possible to learn this much information about hula hooping. Thank you for teaching me all there is to know about hula hooping. No problem. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned many new things about hula hooping.